Welcome to the 2022 Spring Awards. I'm Mary Sandoval, the president of the San Bernardino County School Boards Association and a Fontana Unified School District board member. And I'm Ted Alejandre, the San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools. Let's begin tonight's award program with students from North Shore Elementary School at Bear Valley Unified School District, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. They are followed by San Bernardino City Unified School District's presentation of colors by the Arroyo Valley High School's Army JROTC. Sophia Partain, a student at Citrus Valley High School with Redlands Unified School District, will sing the national anthem. Forward, march, left. My name is Karis Killen. I am a third grader at North Shore Elementary School. Please join my classmates for the Pledge of Allegiance. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Parts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets regular, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled Thank you for such wonderful performances. We have so much talent throughout our county. Here at San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools, we are transforming lives through education. And one way we're doing that is by listening to the students we serve. Together, let's continue to elevate student voice. It has been a challenging past few years, but this school year, students return to the classroom returned to in-person activities and performances. Tonight's words of inspiration come from students across our county. It is important to go to school because when they educate you, you'll remember it for a long time. And when you're in middle school, they'll teach, ask you questions like that in you better remember or you're gonna get bad grades. If I get good grades, I get to go to college and maybe I could be a business semi-truck owner. Education to me means standing your ground and wanting to know what you want to do in life and going forward with it and pushing yourself to the limit. I want to learn and later in life I want to be a doctor and I want to go to college. I feel like art does help me be a better student. It encourages me and it empowers me to do more and to meet more than the expectation. It's like we're all as a family. We're all in there for creating beautiful arts and inspiring each other to create more art for others.
it's a great experience. You get to learn new things. I've been doing this since second grade, but honor band I've been doing since elementary school. It's amazing. It's a great experience to have under your belt. Like, so when you go to colleges and things, you won't be as nervous in front of other people. I started playing the flute in seventh grade, and then I took two years off, and then I started resuming my sophomore year. Um, I think it is actually a really great privilege to be here. I did not expect myself to be sitting in the seats that I am right now. It's really nice to be able to come together and make amazing music with the other High Desert kids. Music has always been like part of me. It's just a lot of fun to like play it and be able to express things through it. Music's it's definitely affected me. I've been able to have like a better concentration in different things. I know my math skills are better because of music because just because there's so many different things you have to keep count of and I'm able to pay attention more to small things. It's nice to be back because we could actually hear each other and actually play music instead of being by yourself and home. I love it. It's a great outlet and I love being able to come here and have this experience and it's such a unique experience that most people don't get to have. San Bernardino County School Boards Association is an active association supporting a network of school board members throughout all regions of this county. We look forward to the next school year and the various opportunities to learn, engage, and collaborate, including the fall joint meeting with Riverside County and the upcoming series of school board training workshops throughout the year. I'd like to now introduce you to Karen Gray, a board member for Silver Valley Unified, who is the CSBA Region 16 Director for a brief report. Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Karen Gray and I'm on the Silver Valley Unified School Board. I also have the privilege of serving as the California School Boards Association Region 16 Director. It's really an honor to be here tonight with you as we recognize excellence in education from across our county. Thank you so much to Superintendent Ted Alejandre and his staff for supporting this awards program, as well as the San Bernardino County School Boards Association. It's humbling every year as we take a look at the nomination forms for these awards. These folks represent decades of support and quality programs that serve your students in your districts. It is amazing to see the opportunities that these individuals who have worked to provide to our students. Thank you. Additionally, CSBA wants to be here to support all of our governance teams. We have a full complement of training programs to help you learn, some of the highlights are the Masters in Governance program. We'll have a Leadership Institute this summer in July. We've also got online resources, webinars, and an online learning center. We have a local public relations specialist. Her name is Nikki Detman. She grew up in San Bernardino County. She knows our county like the back of her hand, and she knows and works with many of you on an ongoing basis. I would recommend that you get a hold of Nikki. She can help you gain knowledge, connect with legislators, or connect with CSBA staff in Sacramento. She's also looking for opportunities and getting ready to schedule some in-person networking events so that we can get together, we can learn, and we can work together to improve education. CSBA has also been working on legislative and issues and advocacy as well. Some of the hot topics in our region have to do with transportation, funding of transportation, as well as uh, COVID, getting back to school, some of the challenges that we're seeing there. And of course, one of the major issues that we're looking at is ensuring that we're getting base funding, that Sacramento is funding base giving us the freedom to do what we know is right and what we need to do within our own districts. So these are just some highlights. The main purpose for this evening is to recognize and thank our award recipients. So to every one of you, congratulations, a life well spent, and a job well done. 
your students and our districts. Thank you. It is with appreciation and admiration that we honor the contributions of individuals and groups to San Bernardino County Public Schools with this year's Education Medal of Honor and Distinguished Service Award. This year, 28 individuals and organizations were nominated for the 31st Annual Education Medal of Honor. In addition, nine individuals were nominated for the 24th Annual Distinguished Service Award. All of the nominees and honorees have made remarkable contributions to public education and to our students. We have a competitive pool of nominees who have shown exceptional dedication and service. We also recognize the outstanding support we receive annually from county and state elected officials who provide certificates for our award recipients. We are grateful for their recognition of the 2022 award winners. Before we get started, I would like to recognize our members of the San Bernardino County Board of Education. I want to thank them for the support they give to our public schools and acknowledge all school district board members for your tremendous support and commitment to public education. I would like to recognize the team I have at Fontana Unified, our Superintendent Randall Bassett and our board. Now to tonight's recognitions. We begin with our 31st Annual San Bernardino County Education Medal of Honor. There are six categories recognizing volunteers in action, partners in education, and excellence in education. Our winners have made a significant impact in education throughout San Bernardino County. These are individuals, groups, or businesses that have served as positive role models, created awareness for education in the community, and have made a lasting and selfless contribution. You'll hear their stories tonight. Some have given a lifetime of service to the profession of education, and all of them have a calling and passion to serve our students and our future generations. Our first award winner in the category of Volunteer in Action, Community Volunteer, is Minnesota Vikings running back, Alexander Madison. He was nominated by Superintendent Doc Irvin, who leads San Bernardino City Unified School District. He's supported by a Board of Education, which includes the Board President, Dr. Scott Wyatt, Board Vice President, Danny Tillman, and members, Myra Ceballos, Dr. Gwendolyn Dowdy Rogers, Dr. Barbara Flores, and Abigail Rosales Medina. Here is his story. Alex represents a community of people. He feels that he has a responsibility to continue to help others. You know, when I think about a celebrity, they don't necessarily have that same intent. And time and time again, when you speak to Alex Madison, he is all about being a vessel for change. Immediately after I was drafted by the Vikings, I began to look into ways to give back. Scholarships are something that was probably the first thing that I did um, in trying to give back. Those are the scholarships that I received coming out of high school, uh, the Black Grad Scholarship, the AXA. I was born and raised in San Bernardino. Some ways that I'm trying to come back and impact my community is uh, through the programs that I've developed with I Am Gifted. I Am Gifted is more than just a brand. I am gifted. Last summer, I hosted the first annual I Am Gifted Friday Night Lights Combine and Camp at San Bernardino High School, where we had uh, 500 youth participants. Are y'all excited to be here? Come on now. We took them out to the field and we took them through uh, a bunch of different drills and then for the older kids the 7th through 12th we 
had them go through a combine-like experience. Turn your hand sideways like this. And they were able to get a card with all of their information written down on what their scores were so that they can provide that information to colleges, information that is key to you know, kids with the dream of playing Division I uh, athletics. I first met Alex when he was about 15 years old when he was a freshman at San Bernardino High School. When I think of Alex, I think of someone who persevered, someone who is tenacious, someone who had a dream and was willing to do whatever it need, he needed to do to make it a reality. As I grew up, um, there was a few times that we did end up homeless and we were able to you know, overcome that adversity. And if it weren't for those people who helped me out, helped my parents out, um, helped our family out, then I wouldn't be in the position I am today, I don't think. And so for me to be able to give back as early as I can, um, I don't think there's time, there's, there's no time to wait uh, to help someone out, to lend someone a helping hand. You on the spot right now. I think there's, there's a lot of power um, in seeing someone else overcome adversity. And I think if there's any kid out there that feels like they're alone, that feels like they're the only one going through something, uh, it's, it's good to hear something from someone like myself to tell you that you're not alone. He wants to stay grounded, and he wants to show people that if he can do it, then they can do it too. Who had some fun today? It's just really such a blessing for me to get to this position today where I have the platform to come back to San Bernardino and provide a little bit of hope and uh, maybe shed a little bit of light and try and continue to raise up uh, the youth and everyone in this city. Our next award winner in the category of Volunteer in Action Service Group is Millionaire Mind Kids, led by its founder and president Dolores Williams. Millionaire Mind Kids was nominated by Stephen Quintero, the Public Information Officers for Adelanto Elementary School District. The district is led by Superintendent Dr. Keenan Mitchell, Board President Christina Benz, Board Clerk Christine Turner and Trustees Holly Eckes, LaShawn Love French, and Stephanie Webster. Let's learn more about the nonprofit organization Millionaire Mind Kids. Adelanto Elementary School District uh, nominated Millionaire Mind Kids. Uh, because of the deep work the organization has done in the high desert. Every person that I talk to, every elected official, every school official, uh, my fellow superintendents in the high desert area, all said I need to speak with Dolores Williams of Millionaire Mind Kids. And she's really dedicated um, to the success of children in the high desert. We have after school programs at all of our schools. They, they go to 6 p.m. We feed them supper and, and the kids are in a safe place to do homework. And so I wanted to provide a different opportunity for kids to do some robotics, engineering type stuff. And so Millionaire Mind Kids uh, is perfectly suited to do that. So Millionaire Mind Kids, in a nutshell, is a nonprofit, community-driven organization that really just evolves with the needs of the community. Well, family is my number one priority. And giving up my aerospace career uh, was very challenging, a challenging decision for me to make. So I had to make a life-changing decision to raise my grandchildren. And so Millionaire Mind Kids started um, with them, Nadja and Khalil. They were ages seven and nine at the time. We all started the company together. So they are the co-founders of Millionaire Mind Kids. Any activity that involves hands-on, uh, teamwork, um, uh, team building, uh, it's particularly fun and engaging for kids, and so that engagement was is there uh, because of the uh, the Lego-based robots, and so you see kids um, discussing, um, problem solving, um, um, thinking through complex problems together. So they're working through a 21st century job environment. It's important for us to introduce students to. Um, different career options that they may not even know exist. Uh, just given that exposure and, and giving students the opportunity to make those choices uh, and watch them become excited uh, about 
using some of the applications and, and, and applying mathematical and relationships uh, in real world experiences through project-based education. Uh, when they're lined up, they're excited, they're ready to get in the classroom. I also see them learning some routines and structures. They come in, they wear lab coats, uh, they wear goggles. They're learning writing, they're learning coding, they're learning mathematics, and more importantly, they're learning synergy and how to work with other people. A very diverse uh, students that come through our summer programs, and, and some of them are uh, academically challenged. Uh, but one of the things that we instill in them, because we are at the root of our program of self-empowerment, is their ability to stand in their greatness, to stand in their power, to define themselves and not allow others to define them, to brand themselves and to create their own successes. Our third award winner in the category of Partners in Education small business or franchise is Toyota Motor North America and its operations manager Arturo Esquivel. This nomination came from Dr. James Q. Hammond, superintendent of Ontario Montclair School District. He's supported by a board of trustees which includes President Elvia M. Rivas, Vice President Sonia Alvarado, Clerk Flora Martinez, and members Kristen Brake and Sarah S. Galvez. Through Toyota Motor North America, Mr. Esquivel has supported various programs and provided opportunities for students in both Ontario Montclair and Chafee Joint Union High School District. Congratulations to our award recipient. Nominating Arturo was uh, quite easy because you think of the person that really symbolizes connectivity with careers, connectivity with corporations and the business community, uh, being such a pivotal partner uh, for schools, uh, Art is the first person that comes to mind. Uh, he's been very instrumental in bringing awareness to our students, our staff and our families, uh, the importance of readiness for high school and then what happens after high school. Currently, I'm the operations manager for the North American Parts Center of California for Toyota, and our main responsibility is to receive automotive parts, and we send them to warehouses throughout the United States and a global perspective. I'm the, the bridge between Toyota and the local community. We look at our role at Toyota, not as a company within the city, but as a partner. Prior to him being engaged with the Ontario Montclair School District, he took a very active role in Toyota's mentoring program at the high school district and knowing that uh, getting kids ready for high school was just as important, he got very involved in the Ontario Montclair School District, not only with business leader presentations, but being very pivotal in bringing the Toyota Motor North America Corporation with our Promise Scholars Program. I became involved about 12 years ago, really in the community. The first project I started was the uh, Toyota Shaky High School Mentor Program. At that point, our headquarters was located in Torrance, and they had a mentor program with Carson High School. We wanted to emulate that out here in the Inland Empire. So prior, prior to COVID, during the mentor program, we would have career panels at, at site, and we would be responsible for getting the panelists on site coming to, on board. I think Arturo takes a very holistic approach to how he creates awareness for education. There's obviously the academic component, which is very important, but there's also that social emotional component. He has been instrumental in doing workshops with families on the importance of safety. He speaks uh, consistently to sixth grade classrooms around uh, our school district with 26 elementaries. That's quite a task. And he's also active on the eighth grade field trips to college campuses. And at the end of the day, it's all about high school readiness, high school readiness in regards to college or careers because uh, the workforce needs competitive graduates. And so he knows that you have to plant those seeds early. Education, you got experience and exposure. And you need to have all three to really round yourself and getting opportunities to do different things you would not have known you could do. 
he has a regional footprint. Obviously, we're very selfish. We love to have him uh, mostly involved in our school district, but he has a very active role in the Chafee Joint Union High School District and other K-8 systems that feed into Chafee. The, the importance of local businesses getting involved in the educational system is really giving back, for one. You're going to give back to the community. More importantly, you're going to give back to the students and the parents, giving them the opportunity of what they can do, what they can accomplish. Well, I, I think Arturo is, is certainly deserving on many levels, but you want to talk about someone who epitomizes business leader support for schools. They don't have to look far, at least in the city of Ontario, because at the Toyota Motor North America Corporation, there's a fantastic leader there that truly values the importance of helping kids find their path, whether it's college or careers. Our next award winner is for the category of Partners in Education Corporation or Government Agency. This year's winner is the City of Fontana Mayor's Education Coalition, with Mayor Aquanetta Warren leading the effort. Derek Sweem submitted the nomination. The true impact of this partner in education has been made across the East Valley and the West End communities. Within the city limits of Fontana are several school districts. They include Fontana Unified, Colton Joint Unified, Rialto Unified, Chafee Joint Union High, and Etiwanda. Let's now learn more about our award recipient. The Fontana Mayor's Education Coalition really helped build links within our community. Recent events provided by the coalition have exposed students to not only current opportunities within the area, but also to future opportunities. The Education Coalition has been in place since 2012. We started as just talking about the possibilities. And then three years ago, we brought everybody in the room. Fontana is unique in that we are serviced by five secondary school districts. And getting everyone on the same page is not easy. But I'm responsible for the whole city. Now, with that said, we also have a very strong, active Chamber of Commerce. And the business community wants to get involved with education. I think it's important in working together as a community um, and not just individual school districts, not just as um, individual institutions, but really what is happening within the region. So Fontana it has so many things going on, has multiple school districts within it. It provides the opportunity for our students to understand that they are not alone in this, um, to understand different perspectives um, from various partners in education and within the community. All the businesses come together through that chamber. So we've done this last year a program called Planes, Trains, and Autonomous Vehicles. And it was so well received. And with this type of programming, we can provide options that students ordinarily would not be exposed to. We're working closely with Chafee College because we want that next step. The other part is working closer with our partners in the business community to make sure these young people, if given the right direction, get those jobs. We as a council are working very, very hard to make sure that we bring jobs to our community. Where we lack is getting people ready for those jobs. Just being exposed, it helps provide a context of their learning and helps them know, um, gives them a North Star to head forward in what they may want. Uh, this coalition isn't about the mayor. I understand the umbrella that I bring to the table. That's it. Uh, all these folks coming together, even people that didn't have these disciplines, coming together to make sure this program worked well. It makes a big difference. You know, we get in there and strategize and talk, but somebody's got to implement it. So I want to thank our Fontana staff members. And everybody's volunteering because everybody has the same goal, that we help and assist our children in our community. So I, this award, is dedicated to all the partners in this coalition.
Our award winner in the category of Excellence in Education, Education Professional, is Dr. Donna E. St. George, a recently retired Redlands Unified School District teacher who serves as mock trial and academic decathlon coach emeritus. She was nominated by Superintendent Mauricio Ariano, who leads Redlands Unified School District. The district is also supported by School Board President Jim O'Neill, Vice President Alex Barra, Clerk Melissa Ayala Quintero, Members Patty Hollihan and Michelle Rendler. Here's her story. Nominating Donna was a, a very easy thing to do for me. Uh, she is student-centered, uh, has their true uh, aspirations and, and success uh, in her heart, motivating students to be better than uh, what they believe they can be, and she brings out the best of them. I think uh, inspiration comes from love. And if you convince students you care about them, that you have their best interest at heart, that you really have a passion for what you do, that comes through and they reciprocate. And I think it's also important to set the bar very high. Kids will rise to whatever expectations you give them. She's the greatest of all times when it comes to mock trial. Um, she definitely put the district on the map. Um, and then most importantly, it brings the community together because she's been able to bring uh, attorneys uh, that um, work in our community, some of them graduated in our community, and come back and work with kids. What's also amazing about her program is the students that she's coached over the years have gone on to become attorneys or have become uh, involved in politics or have become involved in social work. And those students always come back to give back to the schools. Over the course of my career, I've been very, very blessed to have the opportunity to work with former students who've come back and are giving back to the RHS mock trial program. I've probably got one fourth of my students out there in the world today as attorneys. And my proudest achievement is Joel Wax, who's currently serving as a law clerk to Associate Justice Stephen Breyer on the Supreme Court. She is impacting the future of every single student, not only in her mock trial program, but anybody who sat in her classroom because of her high expectations, because she provides real life experiences, because she gives them opportunities to collaborate, critically think, and to be creative. I was an educator for 37 years, and I think the thing I enjoyed most was interacting with students. I found that on most days, I learned as much from them as I taught them. And never being blessed to have kids of my own, I treated my students as my kids. And so I'm in touch with a lot of them going all the way back to the early 90s. Donna St. George, in essence, isn't just teaching kids mock trial or, or how to be successful in court. She's teaching them life. You know, you may be an educator for 25 or 30 years, but if you really love what you do, uh, the impact on kids continues on 40. 50, 60, 70 years, and that's exactly what Donna has done. It's pretty daunting to think about, you know, the impact um, that my students will have. Um, like I said, it's a blessing. It's, um, it's a privilege to have come into contact with so many great kids, with supportive parents who, uh, you know, made it all possible. Um, a lot of stories to tell. Uh, things I've remembered uh, from individual students or just from certain years. Um, I could probably write a book <laughs> about all the stories I've got, but uh, yeah, it's incredible to think about the impact. Our final Education Medal of Honor winner is in the Excellence in Education Student Alumni category. She is Phyllis Morris Green. Ms. Morris Green is a graduate of Adelanto Elementary and Shepherd 
Middle School in the Adelanto Elementary School District. She also attended Hook Junior High School and Victor Valley High School in the Victor Valley Union High School District. She is also an alumni of the University of Redlands in Cal State San Bernardino. She was also nominated by Stephen Quintero from the Adelanto Elementary School District. We have already introduced the governance team for Adelanto Elementary School District, so let's learn more about our award recipient. So, do you know what the Fourth Amendment is? Who can tell me what the Fourth Amendment is? I knew Phyllis as a child, but not as well as I know her now. I think she just has that natural tendency to carry on with things that she feels strongly about. And she just gets in there feet first. Phyllis Morris Green is, is, is particularly remarkable in my mind, number one, because she's an African American, and number two is because she's a woman. I don't see anything that I do special, you know, and for people to recognize my uh, commitment to, to youth and, and uh, promoting education, I'm thrilled. When it would be requests to come in for speakers, for programming in the schools, for like Law Day, I was often called on, on to participate. Um, I would often go out and even as a public defender, I would uh, take on the task of speaking to youth. For example, I was a uh, Victor Valley Union High School mock trial coach for over 10 years. And then my newest project is getting youth involved in civic engagement. My attitude has always been yes, 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 because growing up, you know, people invested in me and I saw it as my opportunity now to invest in youth. Alonso Elementary School District uh, nominated Phyllis Morris Green for the Educational Medal of Honor because she's a distinguished alumni of our district and I, and I thought it was important uh, to show a real example of an Alonso student as a model for our Alonso families and students uh, of, a, of a person leaving and having a distinguished career. I, I am proud to represent Adelanto Elementary School District. Um, they are doing some awesome work out there and I'm just proud that kids have opportunities and I'm just happy. <laughs> She wants to make sure that everybody is treated equally or fairly. She is what we need more of, and that's dedication and compassion for the human race. Congratulations to our 31st annual San Bernardino County Education Medal of Honor winners. Now let's move on to the Distinguished Service Award portion of the program.
You just watched a brief glance at a lifetime of service to education in our region. The first of the two recipients for the 2022 Distinguished Service Award was nominated by Chafee College. His career in higher education spans more than 40 years, ensuring students have a pathway to success regardless of socioeconomic status. Congratulations to Superintendent and President of Chafee College, Dr. Henry D. Shannon. We chose to nominate Dr. Shannon for this honor because he is so, so deserving. You know, he has served at Chafee College since 2007 as the President Superintendent and has done a phenomenal job. Our graduation rates have increased, you know, our students' transfer rates have increased. We have made some significant strides under his leadership and his vision. I've been uh, fortunate to be an educator for over 50 years in St. Louis and here in California and giving back to the underserved communities that I felt like myself. Were it not for public education, I would not be where I am today. For me, it was the barrier was the fact that I could not afford being first in my family. My family could not afford to send me not only out of town, but in town. I think that equity has always been something that we've had to focus on and to make sure that the students who do not have, you know, the same set of resources or have unique needs or, or need a little bit more support, we've always worked to do what we can to ensure that there's a, a level playing field, right? Chafee College under Dr. Shannon's leadership and vision it's, it's embedded, it's ingrained, it's part of every part of what we're doing moving forward. And it's not something that we're remembering to add in. It's part of the overall purpose and, and outcome focus that we're looking for in everything that we're doing. Our population here at JV, uh, they have to have family members supporting them. They're two or three generations in their home. There are barriers, the barriers, education barriers, barriers in terms of finances, barriers of transportation. I didn't have a car, so I relied on public transportation. Uh, you had to make sure you work, do work study, to make sure you can feed yourself. Because many of our students don't have access to the food they need. We have a food pantry on campus. So Panther Care tries to provide some type of resource for all the students' basic needs. So we have non-perishable food items through a partnership with Feeding America. You know, we have grocery cards at our local uh, grocery stores. We've partnered with local restaurants to feed our students more meals. We um, also offer uh, housing referrals or, or stay referrals. If a student's in a moment of crisis, you know, we've arranged for hotel stays. And we also have the emergency grant program where the student writes to us and provides a glimpse of the situation. And then we have funding through donors to provide uh, direct aid to those students in those situations. Socioeconomic status, to me, should not define a person. A person should be defined by their intellect, their ability to succeed, ability to put things together and understand for themselves. So I think that the launching point for me is thinking about what it is that you want to be and the sky is the limit. That pathway to success has to be somewhere you have mentors and teachers and folks supporting you throughout that time. One of the things Dr. Shannon brought to Chafee College is the 10-point plan, which we launched in 2021. We recognized that there was, with between the pandemic and racial unrest over the summer of 2020, that whatever is happening outside of Chafee College, our employees, our students bring with them, carry with them into Chafee College. One outstanding uh, contribution that Dr. Shannon, under his leadership, has brought to Chafee College is the Center for Culture and Social Justice uh, Resource Center. This center is a place, you know, pre-pandemic, we were working to create programming, anti-racist uh, workshops, and offer mental health uh, healing circles all at one location so that the students had a safe space on campus to attend and to, to visit for resources. I can't go anywhere in this community without finding a successful Chafee person. You find Chafee Panthers all around in our community doing great things. And that's what I think that to me manifests itself in this award for me. It's about this award for Chafee College. And that makes me feel real good about that.
Our second individual name for a Distinguished Service Award was nominated by the Career Technical Education Team at Desert Mountain SELPA. Our final honoree of the night has dedicated over 30 years in education. She began her career as a teacher and has pursued opportunities that have yielded positive outcomes for students and adults with disabilities, their families, and local education agencies. Congratulations to Adrienne Shepherd Miles. The aspects of the Distinguished Service Award that stood out to me and the team when we looked at Adrienne were really focused on the impact that she has had on her community, not only within the, the high desert, uh, but within the larger area of the county, and we've even had services down as far as San Diego. Working at Desert Mountain Self, it's not like working. It's just a career. It's something that I, that I love doing on a daily basis. And so when my alarm clock goes off, I don't hesitate to get out of bed. I jump out of bed, to be quite frank. And I go to work, and I absolutely love it. And I've established some great relationships with colleagues, with families, with students. So she took on programs like the California Career Innovations and the California Promise Program. And these were for youth with disabilities who fit a certain criteria, um, who typically would not have access to supportive services at an intensive, personalized level that would help them be successful beyond high school. So she looked for ways that we could support that transition and even help them getting into college or training programs or into jobs and providing the support so that they could be successful. My current role is to oversee our CTE department, which is our career technical education department. I'm responsible for writing the grants, the budgets, and for um, providing oversight for the staff. She cares about us. There were a lot of people who talked about how she's a distinguished leader to us. She really makes sure that we have what we need um, in terms of addressing our personal goals, our professional goals, the support, the information, the tools, the resources to do our jobs to the best of our ability and, and, um, and to really honor the Desert Mountain Selfa's mission statement, which is the relentless pursuit of whatever works in the life of the child. We are providing opportunities for our students that they would not have if we didn't apply for these grants. They wouldn't have the opportunity to work and uh, be paid for it. They wouldn't have the opportunity to participate in the vocational training programs that we're paying for. But also, too, we're working with our kids on workplace readiness. So one thing about Adrian is that she really is a forward thinker. She's looking for where are those service gaps that are not being met. Whereas some people might feel overwhelmed or stressed out by the amount of work that goes into applying for a new program, she's energized by that. We talk about champion. It means that I've been able to uh, respond to grants and bring additional monies into the SELPA so that we could provide more support to reach the continuum of students outside of students with disabilities. When I think about the array of people Adrian's impacted in her 30 years of service, I think of, of course, high school students in special education, parents, I think of educators who she's provided training to, I think of the community partners that we have in businesses and other agencies, and, and I think of the young adults who have been, um, they're out of school, but they still are able to access services that were not previously available to them. Um, I feel intrinsically rewarded every day, all day. Um, and when I get home, I'm not stopping. I'm always thinking about what can I do better? Um, what didn't work? Uh, what can I change? Um, what else can we add? So for me, it's nonstop in terms of uh, trying to look at what services we can provide for our students. This concludes our Education Medal of Honor and Distinguished Service Awards program. I would like to thank my co-host, County Superintendent Ted Alejandre. 
for his assistance in recognizing these outstanding individuals and organizations. I would also like to thank the San Bernardino County Superintendent of School staff for the tremendous behind the scenes work to make this event possible. It has been our pleasure to congratulate all of the winners. And I know I speak for all of us when I say we are so thankful for their dedication and service to our students and the profession of education. County Schools hosts permanent displays for the Education Medal of Honor and Distinguished Service Awards at the Roy C. Hill Education Center in San Bernardino. To learn more about the Spring Awards winners, head over to sbcss.net where you can download a digital program with a complete list and summary of our award winners. While you are there, please take a moment to give us your thoughts about the Spring Awards program by filling out a short evaluation. We hope you enjoyed this evening and thank you again for joining us and have a great night.